this, no, it's that, and now it's this, and no, it's not as bad as this, and it's worse than that, and it's, you know. My, my prayer would be this, you know, is that people would become wise enough to listen to those that are professionals in the field and quit listening to the media and their opinions. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear comes by hearing too. Be careful what you're looking at and be careful what you're listening to. Now, I'm not saying you hide yourself in a closet and, and not be informed. But make sure that your information that you're receiving is the correct form of information. I mean, your life can become a whole lot more simplified if you use the word as, it's, as your guide. Amen. Speculations are not wise to follow. That's what a lot of the coverage has been, has been speculating. That's dangerous. The Bible says that you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that'll make you free. And, and in that token, the Word of God also says that when we speak truth, we need to speak it in love. You know, these aren't the days to, 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 to stand up and say, well, look how big my faith is, and where's your... That's not speaking, and that doesn't bring a calm, that doesn't bring a peace, you know? If you're in faith, just start speaking and encouraging people along that line. For their sake, not for your sake, thinking, look who I am, I'm, I'm walking in faith. No, we speak the truth in love. Faith works by love. So we could probably say it this way as well, without love, faith won't work. <laughs> Has anyone ever heard of Psalm chapter 91? <laughs> well, you're going to hear it again. And, and we do have uh, some sheets that we've printed out with this psalm on it. And... Uh, the 91st Psalm. I'm going to read it from the Amplified this morning. It says this, he who dwells, okay, he who dwells. Okay, it doesn't say he who shows up once in a while. It says he who dwells. What does dwelling mean? Dwelling means you stick around for a while. <laughs> you know, last weekend I went down to, to Wisconsin you know, and, and I, I rented a hotel when I was there, but you know what? That, that's not my dwelling place. I just showed up for a couple days there. No, my, my dwelling place is in Wilmer, Minnesota. That's where I dwell. That's where our, our family spends most of its time together. That's where we do most of our life is in our dwelling place. So it says this, He who dwells in the secret place, not he who shows up once in a while, of the Most High shall remain stable, shall remain stable. If, if you're faint at heart, not just through this, but, uh, you know, you need to spend more time with God. Because there's no more stable force than spending time with Him. There have been times in my life where I, I've felt like I've gotten run over by a, 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 a convoy of semis. <laughs> you know? But when you get into the presence of God, and it's not like this ever it has been, but you just get there to surrender all your junk to him. I mean, I, I don't mean to be crude or anything, but one day I cried out to the Lord. I said, you know what, Father, this, th th this day really sucks. <laughs> but I believe that you sent your son Jesus to take the suck out of my day. And you know, one of those days, you know, Monday morning, you get a call from somebody that didn't necessarily either agree or understand what you said on that Monday, and you didn't, they didn't, you know, call you on Monday because they didn't understand Sunday. 
you know. <laughs> and 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 uh, I don't know about you, but I I you know I don't like to make it a common event to be attacked. <laughs> you know. But thank God for His grace. But after about 20 minutes, it's like something lifted. You know, I mean, the sun looked brighter. The air seemed fresher. <laughs> my, soul, my shoulders were not slumped over because of the weight of what I thought I was going through. And I called this particular individual back and we had a conversation, and it was just a misunderstanding. You know? But thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his dwelling place. Let me get, let me get through this. Shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Why wouldn't you want to dwell there? That's the place where there's a power where no foe can stand. Or can withstand, excuse me. I will say of the Lord. Let's just say this then. He is my refuge, he is my refuge. And, my fortress. and my fortress. My God, my God. on him on I, lean I lean and rely. And in him, and in him. I, confidently trust. I confidently trust. Amen. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by day, nor of the pestilence and the stalks in darkness, nor the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High as you witness the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place, there shall no evil befall you nor any plague or calamity come near your tent for he will give his angels a special charge over you to accompany you and defend you and pres preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service they shall bear you up on their hands lest you dash your foot against the stone you shall tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot because he has set his love Upon. Now, this is talking to you. It says, because he that he is you, not him. Because he, or because you have set his love upon me, God said upon me. So as we set our love upon God, therefore, God said, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name, has personal knowledge of my mercy, Love, kindness, trust, and relies on me, knowing I will never forsake him. No, never. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Psalm 73, verse 26, it said, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the rock and firm strength of my heart and my portion forever. Verse 28, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord and make him my refuge that I may tell of all your works. And then Psalm chapter 50, verse 15, it said, call upon me in the day of trouble. We're going to do that in, in a little while. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Yes. Glory to God. Isn't the word wonderful? Yes. First Peter. First Peter, chapter 5. First Peter, chapter 5. 
Verse 6. Let me see here. I, I'm going to read again from the Amplified. It said, Therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares for affectionately, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. In other words, God's got his eye on you. Be well balanced. Be well balanced. Temperate, sober of mind. That, that word sober means well balanced. Be well balanced of mind. In other words, be smart about things. Maybe you could say, you know, God gave you a brain, use it. <laughs> That's what sober-minded means. <laughs> be vigilant. Be vigilant. In other words, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. <laughs> be vigilant. That's not a lack of faith. That's being sober-minded and cautious at all times for, your en for the enemy of yours. The devil roams around like a roaring, in fierce anger, hungry, seeking around like a lion. He's not a lion. He's like a lion. He's an imposter. He's always been. As a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. I heard someone say this, the devil's got a roar, but he's got no teeth. Amen. Why is it that great big dogs cower to little yappy dogs? <laughs> Serious. We, we, across the street, our neighbor, his daughter has a great Dane. Well, actually, it's what's the one that's even larger? Than, it's just huge. Uh, Marm, Marm, what is it? No. Oh. I mean, she's got a Windstar Ford. She's got a She's got a, a moon, moon roof on it, sunroof, and drives down the road, and that dog is out of the, wind, the, the roof this far. But our other neighbor had a little tiny dog before they moved, and that dog would come down the road and start barking, and that, that Great Dane, or whatever it was, a big dog, ran into the backyard faster than a greyhound. That's what the devil is like. He tries to bark. He tries to roar. But, but he don't have the ability to take you down unless you give it to him. Unless you surrender. I'd rather surrender and raise my hands to the almighty God than to raise my hands and surrender to the enemy. We need to be like David. He didn't run from the giant. He ran towards it. But he didn't run towards the giant just to be running. He ran towards it with the word of God coming out of his mouth. We need to come after this coronavirus from our mouths and say, Lord, we command this thing to die in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep ourselves, you know, sober-mindedly away from things, you know, just in the natural that's not a good thing to be a part of. You can do that with other things, too. The Bible says this, that we're not to test God. That's not faith trying to test God. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't suggest this, but I will use it for an illustration. Them apartments next door are pretty high, aren't they? <laughs> now, if you, get a, if you get a ladder or a hot wire one of their lifts and get on the top of that roof and say, okay, Lord, I'm putting my trust, faith, and confidence in you and take a step off that roof, guess what? You're going to splat. <laughs> now, believing in the Lord and jumping off the roof ain't going to do much. <laughs> it's going to hurt you if you do it stupidly. You don't test God. 
in any way, shape, or form. Be a smart idea. Then there you go. I can agree with that. Where am I? Well, you're still doing it. Number nine, withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined. Knowing that the same identical sufferings and appointed to the brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the whole world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts all blessing and favor, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself complete and make you what you ought to be, establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. And finally, this is the most important part of this passage, to him be the dominion, power, authority, rule forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Amen. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 4. How many of you appreciate the word of God? Philippians chapter 4. Starting with verse 6. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance, in everything by prayer and petition, definite requests, not just something that comes off the... No, make sure that what you're praying is in line with the Word of God. Otherwise, as it says in the book of James, you, you'll pray amiss. You, you won't pray correctly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Your definite request with thanksgiving continue to make your wants known to God and, God, and God's peace shall be yours. That tra tranquil state of soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot or of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Well, I don't understand everything going around us, but one thing I can understand is the peace of God is available to me. Hallelujah. Practice what you have learned. Practice what you've received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it and the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. Don't allow what others believe or do not believe to shake your faith. Just, just determine, well, they don't see it the way I see it, and I don't see it the way they see it. Be a stickler for the word. The word does not change no matter what. Stay informed with truth. With truth. Listen. Like I said earlier, let's listen to what the doctors have to say. Amen. And quit listening to all the pundits of the media. That'll solve a lot of, that, that, that'll solve a lot of anxiety. That'll solve a lot of anxiety. You know, we are living in perilous times, so don't allow peril to live in you or through you. Fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. Amen. It's false evidence appealing real. Now, now I, share, I, sh I said this statement a few weeks back, but tuck this into your heart deeply until it fills your mind. What you magnify matters. What scripture is that? It's not. It's just a truth. <laughs> what you magnify matters. Whatever you magnify matters because what you magnify is what you're going to start believing. And what you magnify, you're going to start speaking. Amen. I will magnify that I love my wife. <laughs> I, I'll magnify that 
you know, I'm the redeemed of the Lord, so I'm going to say so. Not, not because I said so. That's what the Word says about us. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are the redeemed, and we're to, we're to, we're to talk about our redemption. One, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law, and part of the curse of the law is sickness and disease. Are you magnifying surviving, or are you magnifying living? We cannot just get into a survival mentality that we're just trying to survive. No, bless God, Jesus came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. Jesus said that. I didn't say that. I'm glad Jesus said that because now, because he said it, I can magnify that and say it. And what Jesus said was the truth, so when I magnify the truth, the benefits of truth come into my life, come into our lives. What we magnify matters. Praise God. The Amplified says John 10, 10 this way. Now, of course, it starts out with the thief cometh not, but the steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said this. Well, let's say this together. The thief, say the thief, the thief. comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came, say I came. I this is Jesus speaking. Who came? Jesus came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. In other words, the life of God, the, the, the love of God, the, the, the life of Jesus is supposed to so fill us up that it overflows unto other people. That's where the church has opportunity through the, the, the turmoil and the chaos to bring hope, to bring life, to bring encouragement. Yeah. I want to encourage all of us. Everyone in this room, anyone watching by live stream, and hopefully other pastors are encouraging the people of their churches to, to, you know what, if you think of somebody that might be shut away, give them a call and give them a word of encouragement. Yes. I mean, this is a real deal. There, there, are, there are mothers, fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, great-grandmothers, great-grandmothers you know, that are, are literally locked down in their nursing home. Let's not forget them. Let's not forget them. Give them a call. Well, my mom or my dad or whatever is passed on. You know what? If you know somebody, if you just think of somebody throughout the day that may not be in that circumstance, but you just think of them, call them. Call them. See if there's an opportunity to, to speak hope and encouragement into their day, into their life. Because until we get the vocabulary flipped, out, flipped around on this, it's not going to get better fast. It will in Jesus' name. You got to speak it. You got to speak it. If everything's speak, spoken, what's been spoken, it, it's, it's just going to You're on a treadmill. So believe God for our scientists. Believe God for the doctors to get a handle on this. Amen. John 13, or 16, 33, it says, Jesus again, he said, you have perfect peace, for I have overcome the world. Or anything going on in the world, Jesus has overcome. Jesus provides for us his peace to live life abundantly. He, brought, he provides a way, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. We are to thrive, not just survive. Amen. That's what abundant life is for, for you to thrive, not just survive until you get to heaven. We are to be survivalists. In Christ Jesus. Not a survivalist, but a survivalist. Mark that down. Put it on your mirror. Every morning you get up, say, I'm a, I, I've been born by the kingdom of God to be a survivalist. Jesus came to me. 
Give me life and give me life more abundantly. Yep. Forgive me, Lord, for not walking in complete abundance of the life that you've given me. Yep. Hallelujah. We're to thrive, not just get by. President Trump declared today as a national day of prayer. We are living in very serious times. Not, not just this. It's just stuff happening. Stuff happening. You know, I mean, we've got two of our sons that are in the military and one that is out of the military. And, you know, my, my heart just breaks when I hear of any news of any troops that have been killed. Well, this week, we've lost some valuable treasure in a war that's not being covered. Well, the six lives that were lost, you know how many, that, that's our lives, you know, United States military lives since last Saturday on three different attacks. Don't hear much about that, but you know what? That's all those families can think about. They're, they're not even thinking about coronavirus. need to lift them folks up too. Stuff going on everywhere. Stuff going on everywhere. Another thing we don't want to do, you know, like I said earlier, you know, you compare this to something else that's gone on, you know, I mean, there's a lot of statistics out there on if you're in social media or just on the, 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 the regular media, you know, that, that, you know, at this time they really don't matter. What matters is let's get this behind us. Yes. You, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and they are truth. They are true. But man, let's, 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 you know, bear down. You know, fear has become a factor in many lives, families, communities, and business around this globe. Not, it's just not, it's not a United States issue. Many have stated that, 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 that the fear that has been created over coronavirus coronavirus becomes, has become more devastating than the disease itself. That doesn't belittle what the disease has done. Amen. But you know what? Fear doesn't change the word. Fear doesn't change the word, but the word will change fear. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Lives are being lost. Livelihoods are being destroyed. Well, some people have been critical. Well, it's all about money. Well, you know what? Money is about families. In income is about families. It's not just a financial loss. It's a human toll that is taken when, when so many things. I mean, I saw a report, I think it was Saturday night, you know, watching, just watching a little bit of the, the, the local news. And just in the, just in the um, uh, restaurant industry in Minneapolis, the customer rate has fallen 70%. Now, that was Saturday. It's probably worse than that now. I mean, look at, look at the airline in industry. I mean, where's it at now, Heidi? I mean, it's, they're, they're canceling flights everywhere. And you know what? That, 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 it's a good thing for that to happen. But we need to pray and believe God that this gets behind us so people can get back to work. It's not about corporations making money. It's about their, their lives that are dependent, families that are dependent upon the revenue loss. And that's a serious thing worldwide. God's wisdom for our leaders we pray for, whether we agree with them or not. I've not agreed with every president that has stood in that office, but I want to tell you something. I've prayed for every president that's been in office. It doesn't say that we're to pray for those in authority if you like them or if you agree with everything. They, even the ones I liked, I didn't agree with everything. I don't agree with me all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> there, there's, there's some opinions I've had in the past I don't have anymore. <laughs> yeah, praise God is right, Dorothy. I don't know which ones you know about, but praise God. <laughs> let, let, let's just turn there real quickly, and then, then we're going to get to praying here. First Timothy, once again. There's a whole lot, of, lot in the, 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 the book of Timothy, isn't there? There's a whole lot of every, in every book of the Bible. But First Timothy chapter 2. says, verse 1, Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, or all men, for God, or excuse me, for kings and all who are in authority. And here's the purpose why we pray. Whether you agree or disagree, this is how, why we pray that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Our country. The, the people of this world need the church to rise in faith. Praying and acting by faith, encouraging, getting involved where you can get involved in action. Amen? I mean, the first act I, I've even suggested today that we can all do is pick up the phone and encourage somebody. The good news of the Word of God is, is too good for us to keep to ourselves. I, I didn't tell to pick up the phone and start preaching to somebody. Amen? I mean, just, ta just start a, start a sober-minded conversation like you care about them. And if the Holy Spirit opens a door for you to, to, to give them some scripture or to, to speak the word of God to them, let it be so. Or, or Praise God. Take the opportunity to get the word out there. But at least get a hearing ear first. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I've done that myself. I mean, I, I've been involved in, in, in um, doing uh, some fifth step work for a couple of different treatment facilities around our area. You know, and I, I've endured, endured, you know, sometimes two, three hours of cussing and swearing because I'm listening to them tell their story. And all the time when they're, you know, I know, I know their trick. They're, they're testing me to see if I'm real. I smile. I encourage them. And then it seems like every time the Holy Spirit say, Lord, help me listen with an open heart and ear to their story so that I can use their story with the Holy Spirit's help and power back onto them to open up their heart to what the Word of God says. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is kind while it's being patient. <laughs> I told people this. I said, you know, man, you get into some of these things here, and I mean, it's, it's where the rubber meets the road, and you can still smell the burning rubber. <laughs> T tires are squealing. I, I, back when, when Evelyn was with us here in the office, I had to say, you know what? You may hear things today from my office you've never heard before. But it's okay. God's doing a work. <laughs> but just be that. We can all pick up the phone. Amen. Just be a word of hope. Give them a word of encouragement. Some people, you know what, it, it would change their whole demeanor if, if someone just said, you know what, everything's going to be okay. This too shall pass. And pray and ask God, what can I do? What can my part be? 
as your ambassador. Remember, the Bible says that we're ambassadors of Christ. I'm going to read this proclamation from President Trump. Now, remember, if you don't like him, that's, that's fine, but I, I'm grateful that, that, that he's asked for this nation, the church in this nation, to pray. The Lord says, therefore I exhort. <laughs> First of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, giving of thanks, be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority. This was issued March the 14th, 2020. In our time of, gr of greatest need, Americans have always turned to prayer to help guide us through the trials and periods of uncertainty. As we continue to face the unique challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic, millions of Americans are unable to gather in their churches, temples, synagogues, mosques, and other houses of worship. But in this time, we must not cease asking God for added wisdom, added comfort and strength. And we must especially pray for those who have suffered harm or who have lost loved ones. I ask you to join me in a day of prayer for all people who have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic and to pray for God's healing hand to be placed on the people of our nation. As your president, I ask you to pray for the health and well-being of your fellow Americans and to remember that no problem is too big for God to handle. We should all take to heart the holy words found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Let us pray that all those affected by the virus will feel the presence of the Lord's protection and love during this time. With God's help, I love this statement, we will overcome this threat. On Friday, I declared a national emergency and took other bold actions to help deploy the full power of the federal government to assist with efforts to combat the coronavirus pandemic. I now encourage all Americans to pray for those on the front lines of the response, especially our nation's outstanding medical professionals and public health officials who are working tirelessly to protect all us from the corona, coronavirus and treat patients who are infected. All of our courageous first responders, National Guard, the dedicated in individuals who are working to ensure the health and safety of our communities and our federal, state, and local leaders, we are confident that, we will provide, that he will provide them with the wisdom Praise God. They need to make difficult decisions and take decisive actions to protect Americans across the country. As we come to our Father in prayer, we remember the words found in Psalm chapter 91. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. As we unite in prayer, we are reminded that there is no burden too heavy for God to lift or for this country to bear with his help. Luke 137 promises that with God nothing shall be impossible. And those words are just as true today as they have been. As one nation under God, we are greater than the hardships we face. And through prayer and acts of compassion and love, we will rise to this challenge and emerge stronger and more united than ever before. And I believe that. Maybe that, I mean, if, if, you know, that's what we need in our nation. We need a coming together. We can disagree, but let's not hate one another. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let, let, let's come together. Let's see, we're uh, in the, uh, We rise to this challenge and emerge stronger and more united than ever before. Amen. May God bless each of you, and may God bless the United States of America. It says, Now therefore I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, do hereby proclaim March 15th, 2020, as a national day of prayer for all Americans affected by the coronavirus pandemic and for our national response efforts. I urge Americans of all faith and religious traditions and backgrounds to offer prayers for all those affected, including people who have suffered harm or loved ones lost. 
In witness, therefore, I have hereto, hereunto, set my hand this 14th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2020, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 244th, Donald J. Trump. So, Father, we come together, united in prayer. Praise God. Not to co combat one another, but to combat this virus and the devastation that is, it's reaping around the world. We will overcome this threat with your help. We will overcome this threat with your guidance. We thank you, Father, for giving us the Holy Spirit to lead us in every day of our life and through troubling times. Praise God. We pray for those who are on the front lines in the medical field, the medical professionals, public health professionals. We thank you for first responders. And now that the National Guard has been called to, to come in and, 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 and bring order to some areas and bring supply and help, there is nothing too big for you, O oh God. And we just submit our trust, our faith, our confidence in you. We believe, Lord, that still the best days are still ahead. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity. I believe that every single person within this room or at the sound of my voice through live stream. That not only would we look at our lives and say, man, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? But we can look out and say, what can I do for somebody else? We pray for those in our nursing homes. Father, that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding would guard their hearts, guard their minds in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness. It was just a short week ago this morning, that's what we spoke about, was the goodness of God. Well, Lord, that hasn't changed throughout this week. For it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. We ask again and again and again to give us wisdom. Thank you, Father, for the, the holy written word of God becoming more amplified in our hearts and minds than it, we've ever allowed it to be before. Lord, there's never, never a time where bad or tragedy can outdo your goodness and your provision for our lives. Father, we pray for those that, that potentially could either get their hours cut back or, or, or laid off. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that, that you meet all needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, help we, the church, to be ambassadors of you to help spiritually guide this nation and, and, and pastors around the world to guard their nation, guide their nations through this crisis. In Jesus' name. Help us be a blessing and not... not a trouble. <laughs> we pray that the church would become and stay united just as it begun in the book of Acts. Glory to God. And that the voice that we speak is from the word 
as Jesus when he was tempted in the wilderness. He declared to the enemy, it is written, it is written, it is written. So help us keep our hearts in the it is written word of God. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you for, for keeping us alert to help us be vigilant, even in the natural, Lord. Glory to God. And we proclaim, because the word proclaims that by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. We thank you for a, 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 an outpouring of healing around this world. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, and, and desperate situ situations take desperate action. But we're not desperate in the flesh. Father, we become desperate because we've turned our hearts away from you. Not, not, not necessarily in this room, but as a nation. As nations around this world. Father, help us humble ourselves to seek your face. To repent and turn back to you and from our wicked ways. <laughs> In Jesus' name, alert us to your heart. Alert us to those things you called us to. And be sure to walk away from those things you've called us from. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's any others who've got something to, 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 to say, just, just let's, let's pray here for a while. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Let's just worship God, worship God together. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. That's due only to you. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. character of Jesus Christ in our lives so that we truly are loving one another, that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren, and that is the mark of your people, dear God. And if we walk in love, love never fails. So we look for success, Father, as we follow you and do not follow what is being spoken to us and that we would see of others around us. But God, we see you, Jesus, and we follow you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Yes, amen. Yeah. Blessing to be poured out on them that they can say, Look what the Lord has done. Yes, yes, I just yes, pray yes. for that, that those that are unbelievers, that those that don't know you, Lord, can see and can go, What has what is this thing that has been done? But look at this, look at what the Lord has done, and that you, Lord, in this recovery would be exalted, that you would be given the credit yeah. and the glory yes. that is due your name. That I and I pray also, Father, that the fear of the Lord would become wisdom for our leaders the fear of the yeah. Lord um, would just rise up in people that they would just cry that you are holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty that there would be led to a great repentance and a great humbling across this nation in Jesus mighty name hallelujah hallelujah thank you father thank you father Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? And I would certainly hope that as serious as we may take a proclamation like this, that we would make every day a national day a prayer. You know, uh, glory to God. Anyone else? Thank you, Father. I plead this yet, but of the Lord Jesus Christ over all of us. And I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, we are all healed. And I declare in the name of Jesus that this disease is gone in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Here, just a second, Jean. Can we can we get a microphone for you, she, please? Because we then everyone can hear it. Because yeah. I know it's going to be good. <laughs> we read in the Bible where there are plagues, and then we see where the plagues were stayed. And I believe that in our government and in this nation and in the world, there needs to be godly repentance unto salvation. Well, with that to come, we have an exposure of sin. Did you know that it is good when our sin finds us out? Because when it finds us out, there is only one place to go, and that's to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have the truth, and that is truth is to be proclaimed before people so they have an antidote for the sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. We do not believe that compassion is the license to let evildoers go free, and we believe that people who have been hurt are to be protected and not for the perpetrator to be coddled. And so, Father, I thank you that you are turning our nation right side up, that we know what good is good and evil is evil, that man is man and woman is woman, and all of the politically correct things and the perversions that they will be exposed as lies. We are God's creation. We are God's creation. And so, Father, you will turn that around for your glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's true. It's good. To, it's good to have things that are that have been re hidden for so long to be revealed. Amen. I'm so glad that I came in contact with the truth that showed me how wrong I was without Christ. Without him, we're all a mess. <laughs> may, not, may not show up on the outside, but on the inside. Victor, over here. Hallelujah. This would be more just a, a compliment, uh, more of a word of encouragement. I'm just found in... Uh, Luke, um, I mean, this just goes out to um, the Christian nation. Um, and when we talk about ashamed um, of doing certain things that might be embarrassing to you but brings glory to God, I just want to encourage you guys that this is just another opportunity for the good news to be spread. Um, people, I believe even including Christians, have lost all sort of peace in Christ because of this pandemic virus. Um, but I just want to encourage those in this church that this is an opportunity to share the gospel Mm -hmm. with those who are panicking. Amen. Um, and this means, you know, uh, if any, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will be, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself or destroyed 
If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. So I just kind of straight, Jesus said it. Um, but I just want to encourage everybody to remain faithful and not not grow weary in the in the in the good news. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, as we close this morning, you know, uh, you never want to take for granted, even though you may know sometimes all the faces here or or know who they are or whatever, but you never know who tunes in to watch the service through live stream. So that's the reason why we usually co close this way, just simply because it is an opportunity, even as Victor encouraged us from the word of the Lord, you know, that we have an opportune time to present the living, loving Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it says in the book of John, the third chapter, the 16th verse, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus spoke those words. And then the 17th verse is, I've, I've, come, I've not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. You know, and I shared a couple weeks ago that that was my 40th year since I called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And the scripture that I was brought to is in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jump down a couple verses to verse 13. It said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says that God demonstrated his own love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. There's coming a day, whether you do it today or do it, you know, another day, but it said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Just make sure you make your proclamation on the right side of your last breath. Amen? I'm going to lead us all in a prayer in line with this scripture here that we just read in from Romans chapter 10. So if, if you just bow your head, please, and, and pray this with me. Now, if, if this is a prayer that maybe there's someone here that you may not have the Lord Jesus as your Savior or your Lord, but, but you know, you, I'm, not, I'm not saying just say it to say it. You've got to believe it first of all in your heart, and then confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you shall be saved. Amen? Let's pray together. If you can agree with me, pray this prayer with me. Here, pray it. Pray it if you're watching live stream. Pray it as if you were with us here in this room. Say, God in heaven, God in heaven I thank you, I thank you for, the for the plan that you had for me to be rescued from the sin that I was living in. I have sinned. I have fallen short of your glory. But I believe you sent your son Jesus to live upon this earth without sin so that he could become sin for me. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus came obediently, that his blood was shed upon a cross to wash away my sin. He died for me. He, he, he was my substitute. The sacrifice. Everlasting sacrifice. To take away my sin. Took my place in hell. But he's risen from the dead. He's alive forevermore. Because I believe in my heart. I boldly declare with my mouth today that Jesus is my Lord, that his, his blood has washed away my sin, 
and he is risen, and I'm raised together with him. In Jesus' name, Jesus is my Lord. Thank you, Father, for loving me so much, for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being obedient to even the death of the cross. Thank you, Father, for sending me the Holy Spirit to lead me, teach me, empower me to fulfill the call that God has on my life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Bow your head just a moment longer, just, just, just to see here. Would there be anyone here, you say, Pastor Rod, that's, that's me. I've prayed with you. I believe with all my heart. Wasn't too sure before I got here, but I know for sure right now that Jesus is my Lord, that, that, that I'm okay with God and God's okay with me. Is there anyone here this morning? Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you for this opportune time to be used by the Spirit of God to show how real your love is to those around us. Lead us, guide us, protect us in this day and the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.